Hello and welcome to this week's newscast from PEI. I'm Kelvin Ross. This week's stories are Turkey agrees to send a floating power plant to Gaza. The UK sees a surge in gas-fired power generation. South Korea is facing a nuclear spent fuel crisis. And Australia's clean energy industry fears the country's renewables target may be scrapped. Turkey plans to send a floating power station to Gaza to provide vital electricity to the troubled region. Turkey's energy minister said that the power ship would be sent as soon as Gaza's port facilities had been upgraded. He explained that Israel was aware of the plan and had offered no objections. The floating power plant will be provided by Turkish company Karadeniz Holding, which is the only shipbuilder in the world to make the vessels, which can operate both on liquid fuels as well as natural gas. Karadeniz has five operational power ships and another eight under construction, which will bring the total capacity of the fleet to around 2,000 megawatts. Gaza regularly suffers blackouts for up to 20 hours a day, and its only power plant is routinely switched off for weeks at a time because of fuel shortages. Coal plant outages and falling gas prices triggered a surge in gas-fired generation in the UK during the second quarter of this year. Data released by analysis firm Inapsis shows that in the three months to the end of June, gas plants contributed 10.8 gigawatts to Britain's power mix, a total of 29% and a 9% increase on its contribution in the first quarter. According to the report, the rise was due to rapidly declining gas prices caused by excess supplies in storage, which made gas generation more commercially viable than coal. It was also caused by operators choosing to use the summer's warm weather to begin maintenance on several coal plants, triggering a fall in coal share of the overall power mix from 35% in the first quarter to 26%. Lower than expected levels of wind generation, caused mainly by benign weather conditions, also led to an increase in gas generation. South Korea is under pressure to find storage space for its spent nuclear fuel, as temporary storage capacity is expected to be full by 2016, according to independent body the Public Engagement Commission, which advises the Korean government. The Commission has even warned that the country will have to stop nuclear power generation if it fails to find the extra temporary space. South Korea has 23 nuclear reactors supplying about a third of its power, and each year they produce around 750 tonnes of spent fuel. At the end of last year, more than 13,000 tonnes of spent fuel was being held in temporary storage, with some plants forecast to start running out of storage space from 2016. A permanent disposal site for low to medium level radioactive waste was completed in June. However, the government has delayed its start-up for six months until it is approved by the nuclear watchdog. Australia's $20 billion clean energy industry is under threat of being undermined as the government deliberates on whether to abolish or significantly reduce its renewable energy target. Some developers are already said to be considering pulling out of investments in advance of the decision. Prime Minister Tony Abbott's decision to appoint Dick Warburton to lead the committee advising on the policy has driven fears of a U-turn as Warburton is on record as saying he's sceptical that man-made carbon dioxide is creating global warming. Chris Judd, chief executive of wind power company Senvion, warned that dismantling the renewable energy target would be catastrophic for the industry. The renewable sector has generated $20 billion since the country first set goals for clean energy in 2001, but Abbott is minded to use renewables as a means of reducing electricity bills and favours coal and gas over wind and solar. Australia's spending on large-scale renewable energy projects fell to $58 million in the first half of this year, from almost $1.3 billion a year earlier. That's all for this week. Don't forget to follow all our breaking news on Twitter and LinkedIn. We'll see you again soon.